but oh speaking mm. of we we were thinking of we were looking at like kind of retro things yes. um and core boots and that sort of thing um probably won't show up very well but this is a gigabytes motherboard mm -hmm. um it's the only one on the compatibility list for libre boots mm -hmm. and so most people when they think of libre boots and core boot they're doing everything with laptops but I really enjoy working with desktops. And sure, I've been a ThinkPad guy, and that's what people know me locally for. But I like playing around with desktops. And so I bought this board. Um, I haven't messed around with doing any Libre Boot stuff on it. But it is the only desktop board that's on the Libre Boot compatibility list. And I've got it. And I'm happy I've got it. Now I just got to find time to play with it. Mm -hmm. So I have not looked at all into Libre Boot. Some people have mentioned it before. But what exactly is Libre Boot for people who have no idea? Myself kind it, of included. Yeah, so if you're sort of techie, and most of your audience is, the best way to describe it is that it's a replacement for the manufacturer BIOS. Mm -hmm. So instead of having the regular BIOS, it replaces it with Libre Boots, is the free and open source one. So that's the GNU one that says, like, is freeze and freedom. There's no binary blobs in the Libre Boots and that sort of thing. But that's not possible on all models. So then Core Boots and several other projects have sprung up that have some binary blobs, but are mostly open source. Mm -hmm. And so there's some advantages from a speed point of view. I think they boot faster, which really, of course, that doesn't matter too much. You know, you press mm -hmm. the power button. If it takes a little bit longer from a practical standpoint, that doesn't matter. But a lot of people like that. And mm -hmm. I think there's some configurability things that you can do some things that you might not have been able to do with the regular BIOS. Mm -hmm. But there's also some things that you might not be able to do because you know that the, that custom BIOS, that essentially BIOS replacement, has to have all of the hardware features recognized and coded in. Right. So if you're trying to use it on a model that, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, this particular thing doesn't work on the laptop because we don't have that included in LibreBoot yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, so because it's a BIOS replacement, it's got instructions, basic instructions for some of the hardware. So mm -hmm. maybe your Ethernet won't work or your sound won't work or that sort of thing. I think for most of the models they do now that they mm -hmm. support. But it's a very limited list. Like I said, I've, there's only one desktop motherboard, and that's a, a LGA775 board. So like the Core 2 Duo processors, that old. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is, is still a viable platform for a lot of people's use. Um, I just sold a computer with a Core 2 Duo not that long ago to somebody who just wanted to use it for a particular task, and they were fine with that. But, you know, but the problem with the newer stuff for people who are concerned with security, you know, with the i5 processors, they had the Intel management -ish engine, and, you know, they've got stuff in there that you can't turn off and stuff like that. So I actually predict there'll be, again, a resurgence of interest in things like the Core 2 Duo processors, because at least then people can say, well, I know what's in there for the mm -hmm. most part. And I know it doesn't have the Intel management engine spying on me and that sort of thing. And I'm not, a, I, I don't know a ton about privacy stuff, but I'm like, I'm not a security researcher. I just have an interest in mm -hmm. um, these retro things that end up having this crossover with free software stuff and Libre Boots. And so, yeah, if, if any of your viewers have a good resource for getting started with Libre Boots, um, um, feel free to post it in the comments because that is probably of interest to a lot of people. But the documentation, yes, there is documentation, but for somebody who's just getting into it and is somebody who's, I'm pretty techy, I know my stuff. I, I've, you mm. know, I've been working on computers a long time. It's still intimidating and I still don't mm -hmm. know where to start. Right. So if somebody has a great resource of like, hey, here's how I actually did this. I know there's resources out there, but feel free to share them if you know a mm -hmm. good one. 